I just wanted to make a few remarks about a term that Paul used, urban metabolism, and that's a, a framework, it's a kind of a lens to look at the city, and we have a project here that's been going for the last couple of years that we call the Metabolism of Boston. And as you can maybe gather from that term, we're looking at cities using the metaphor of an organism. And so we have flows of materials and energy into the city and waste products that are coming out of the city. And that lens allows us to examine how a city works with an eye towards sustainability, ultimately. So in the currency of urban metabolism, or the economy of urban metabolism, we use carbon as kind of the currency. It's the thing that we're tracking because it cuts across the human and the natural systems. So we breathe out carbon dioxide, our tailpipes, our factories, our buildings are emitting carbon dioxide. The trees are taking up carbon dioxide, the soils are processing carbon, the Charles River is delivering carbon to the ocean. And so it really becomes a glue that, that kind of connects us. And we found some really interesting things in, in thinking about that metaphor, that lens. As you can gather, it's a very biological metaphor, and yet we, we are able to see human behavior actually impart itself into that kind of clockwork of the city. And so we're tracking carbon dioxide 24-7 on a roof at Boston University, as well as several other places, including the top of the Prudential Building. And we see some really interesting uh, indicators of human behavior on a large scale. For example, in the weekdays versus the weekends, we see a different pattern of carbon dioxide buildup associated with uh, the commute patterns and how those shift between the weekends and the weekdays. And really, when we think about weekends and weekdays, that's a purely human construct in terms of how we partition up our time. It's not tied to any meteorological or any natural phenomenon. And so we really are seeing this you know, behavior of humans writ large.